Making over Holly's kitchen to be a little bit more functional for her and her lifestyle has definitely been quite the mission and I'm really excited to be wrapping it up today with a budget-friendly small kitchen makeover. Now, we have already done the kitchen quote-unquote add-on. We have also painted cabinets, which you guys had a lot to say about how I did it last week and I love the feedback, but I definitely am not gonna be painting cabinets moving forward. So today we're gonna zoom in and patch up this hole that I had no idea really what to do with or why it was there and start to move forward with doing all the final touches the final details and really just bring this kitchen to life but not have to spend an arm and a leg on it so before you come judging me this outlet is just spray textured over so don't even be like Rachel man me 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 you're not doing it right like listen I'm trying to learn how to do it right how else are you supposed to do it no uh, a joint compound how many holes did it take to hang this thing? After adding some joint compound where the wall was uneven after chiseling away a little bit, I decided to put back the drywall that was already there. And I am noticing that I did not add a two by four on the right hand side. I don't know why I did not do that. You wanna make sure that if you are patching up drywall, you frame it out and then you put the drywall on top. I don't really know where my brain was right here. So please pretend that I put a two by four and it's really stressing me out that I didn't on the right hand side and equally drill it in. And then you can go ahead and use that fiber tape and go over the seams of what we need to be patching up because that basically gives it a grid, the joint compound to sit onto, dry to, and kind of create like an even surface um, in order to start to patch it up. If there is anything you should be taking away from my videos is the fact that I'm showing like the real time process and the things that I am learning doing the first time. So one thing that I have come across is with joint compound, it doesn't necessarily dry up quickly. So you want to do it in thin layers if you need to be layering it a little bit on the thicker side of things. And as that was drying, I went through and I just used a wet sponge to get rid of the excess joint compound around the other nail and screw holes, dings and doinks that I have filled previously. I actually let the joint compound sit overnight, so that's why you see me in the robe the next morning. I realized that it was still there and I had to get to work. But also, in the last video when I taught you how to paint kitchen cabinets, I mentioned that Holly wanted me to remove that molding, so that's why you see that gap right there where I am using the sponge currently. And I'm not too sure what she wants to do, so I just kind of left it alone for the meantime. That's the only thing about joint compound is you have to wait for it to dry before you paint, obviously. So I just went through, did a couple more touch-ups, gonna let that dry, run to Home Depot, and prep to paint. I'm going to continue with the pure white by bear for Holly. That is per her request. And she wants me to do a semi-gloss because that is easier to clean within the kitchen when like grease and grime gets on it. So, but we need to wall texture first. I'm gonna show you a little DIY hack. All right, so texture previously on the wall. And then you can see where I patched it. And then there's this wall texture spray. So hopefully this works. I set it to a heavy, oh, and it doesn't. What is happening? Fingers crossed. I like to have a little sponge as well as the wall texture, and then I'm adjusting it as I go. Go in, and the wall that's already textured, I'll just remove that gunkiness from. I opted to actually go over the entire wall area that I patched up with that wall texture to make it look completely even. This is where we patched up that big hole. And this stuff doesn't seem like it gets everywhere, but it does. And it actually takes a fair amount to dry. And then I'm gonna pat it down. You'll see. It looks Crazy. Oh wow, I missed all this. You can tell. A little bit more even coverage. Great. Now that needs, needs to dry. I used that wet sponge just to pat down where things were looking a little bit too bumpy, but once this dries and settles, it really blends in with the rest of the walls and you can barely tell that I did the patch job and the texture job myself. After that wall texture was completely dry and the joint compound was completely dry, that's where I'm coming in with the Summing Gloss Ultra Pure White by Bear, which you can just pick up in the paint section at Home Depot. You don't have to have it mixed or anything. 
I need to put this on so I don't get paint everywhere on me. Does this look insane? I bet you it does. Fashion. But seriously, I don't want to get paint everywhere. Oh, and I need long sleeves. Shoot. I'm not gonna sit here and lie anymore and try to like show my face. Getting paint splatters all over sucks. So I'm even gonna put on glasses too. Long sleeves, mask, glasses. Don't make fun of me. You would do it too. Oh, oh gosh, it's leaking. Before you come at me, before you even say a thing about me painting over those cans of the lights, yes, I am aware that is not what you do and I will be replacing those, but right now I just don't have the budget to keep investing into Holly's house. To be quite frank, it's my second house I'm making over that's not mine. So I'm following suit. She was painting the ceiling in the living room and this is what she did. She painted over those cans. So that is what I am doing as well and yes i eventually removed those bulbs i just don't know why i've been feeling so lazy and deflated lately um so i apologize when you see me kind of cut corners sometimes okay coat one as i continue painting i want to explain that i'm going to be taking down that window treatment because we will be building a privacy fence in the front yard very soon that covers that kitchen window right there, the one that is the larger to the left, and the front glass door. So we will have complete privacy. Nobody will be able to see in. So don't freak out about that either. It's currently 11.05 on Friday the 13th. What a wild Friday night I'm having. Um, I'm gonna start peeling off the plastic because the paint is officially done and we can move on to all of the rest which is just adding shelving and then seeing what else we can do to make it a little bit more functional for her without going over our budget pretty crazy seeing it painted white with the green it genuinely looks so much bigger already and she did buy a big fridge which is the wrong size that's why it hangs out she knows she's aware she wants to put it in the garage and get a new one but i want to take a quick second to thank today's sponsor that made this episode possible and that is my family over at hellofresh not only has HelloFresh been a longtime sponsor here over on the channel, but I have been a longtime customer with them just as much because I really love the fact that I can get mouthwatering seasonal recipes, fresh pre-measured ingredients delivered right to my door with America's number one meal kit, which is HelloFresh. There is really something for everybody, including low calorie, vegetarian, and kid-friendly recipes every week. Right now, I am more so focused on a plant-based diet, and that is the box that I am getting. You can also save time and stress effortlessly HelloFresh cuts out the stressful meal planning and prepping so you can enjoy cooking and get dinner on the table in just about 30 minutes or you can even do it in 20 minutes with their quick and easy options. The packaging HelloFresh uses to ship your food is almost entirely made from recyclable and or already recycled content. HelloFresh's pre-portioned ingredients mean there's less prep for you and less wasted food and that is something I was so guilty of when I was just grocery shopping on my own. I would waste so much food. It was ridiculous. I love the fact that HelloFresh is flexible and fits my lifestyle. You can add extra dinner or lunches to your weekly order. You can easily change your delivery days or food preferences and even skip a week whenever you need. HelloFresh is committed to making fresh, delicious food available now more than ever and has taken an extra step to keep its employees and customers safe during this time. If you guys are interested in checking out HelloFresh, go to HelloFresh.com and use my code METS90 to get $90 off, including free shipping on your first box. Thank you so much, HelloFresh, for being a consistent sponsor over here on the channel. I really do appreciate it. Let's move on to some very easy DIY upgrades that you guys can do yourselves at home, even if you are intimidated by tools. Grab a screwdriver and let me tell you, switch out those screw plates to screw list plates. This is something that is a tried and true in every makeover for me. I just think it cleans up a space so much not seeing those two screws and the fact that this is more of like a modern looking outlet cover. Your girl is starting to really rev up over on the blog, so you can always find a corresponding blog post at babe.space where it goes into lengthy detail about what I would have done differently, the schedule, the budget, and just the fun facts in like a bullet form for you if you don't want to keep revisiting this video and having to like skip through and watch it. So that is down below for you at well. Use at your own discretion. Oh, I didn't even realize the paint. 
As much as I want to rip out that backsplash and put down butcher block and just really update the space, it's just not in the cards for me. And I'm starting to get a little bit, um, like bummed that I'm not making major changes to a house that I own. So to keep this on the budget friendly side of things, that way I can do my dream kitchen when I get my house, uh, I decided to opt by adding a floating shelf above the granite right on top of the lip. Now I have done this before. These are just with pocket holes going where the studs of the wall are for maximum support. I've done this in my DIY office makeover when I lived at Paul's. They are really, really awesome. I I cannot take credit for this DIY, so I don't wanna go into too much detail. So more DIY creators, I have linked him down below for you. This is where I saw this fun DIY for an easy floating shelf. It's really surprising how much these shelves can hold, but this isn't really meant for dishes or anything. What my goal was for this shelf right above the lip was to number one, make it look a little bit more chic and modern to close that granite lip off now that those cabinets are not there. But number two, to take those little weightless items that are on the countertop now, she has no counter space. So if I lift those up a bit, it's gonna make the kitchen feel a little bit more lifted and larger since there's not a lot of clutter on top of that counter space. I repeated this same thing to the opposite side and I just made it as long as I possibly could. Like you saw, I extended it past the granite a little bit. That is going to make the kitchen feel a little bit longer as well to play a trick on the eye to just really make this kitchen feel not so crammed. As a reminder to you guys, I have linked this floating shelf tutorial down below, but also where you see me drilling in the pocket hole screws, those are going into studs into the wall. That is what is holding up everything. I did caulk where the wood was meeting the granite, and then I went in with a putty knife or some form of a straight edge to get the excess off that's not supposed to be there. If it dries, don't freak out. Take a straight edge razor, get like a workshop rag of some sort, dampen it a little bit and scratch right over it, and it won't ruin your granite or whatever work surface you're scraping. But I like to use a putty knife plastic where I can when it's wet just to avoid any sort of damage to anything I'm working on. Since I am not going to be putting food up here, I am going in with a matte poly sealant just to ensure that there is no weather damage, no moisture, nothing of the sort. But if you're gonna be putting food, you wanna use butcher block finish, um, which I used on a like touch up the house with me video and I will link that for you as well. To ensure that I didn't take those cabinets down and then install shelves where the dishes don't fit, I made sure to measure the cabinet, the inside, 6,000 times. And then I ordered these brackets online to match the kitchen addition that we've done previously. And I anchored those into the wall appropriately where I needed those to be space to look aesthetically pleasing. I would have loved to go into a stud, but if you don't, you wanna make sure that you're using the appropriate drywall anchors. I decided to extend the shelves on the left-hand side all the way to the window because we are not doing those window treatments since we are building that privacy fence and all those windows will be blocked from the street. Nobody will be able to see in. As a temporary fix though, you're not gonna see it in this video, I do have fog paper that is renter friendly. So you can even put that up in your own studio or whatever when maybe you have a window that you're not necessarily getting the privacy that you desire. Instead of using the butcher block that we did for the kitchen addition, which it looks stunning and great, but let me tell you, it's fairly expensive. I decided to go and use two by 12s and cut them down to the size of the length of the shelves for each side to give that thickness to go over the lip of the bracket and also to look very similar to the butcher block. If she would like to upgrade it to butcher block, she's more than welcome. But again, guys, I wanted to do this for as cheap as possible so it didn't seem like you had to buy butcher block to get this look. You just to sand it down and show it some extra love. This is my favorite part, when I can start to add things to the space to make it function and become the space again. Gosh, this kitchen has been in shambles for two weeks and I feel so bad tornadoing into Holly's life in the way that I did, but I hope when I do leave this house, she feels a lot better as it being a reflection of her because I am, again, trying to tailor this entire house specifically to her taste, her needs, her lifestyle. Um, so I just hope she's stoked on it, side note. <laughs> I didn't update this one because it is so testy that when we swapped it out to update this, it shut all the electrical off on the opposite wall. So I didn't have, like change this wall plate because we need to update the electrical like fully, fully, and I can't do that. It's really crazy to think this is what it looked like before, before. 
and then this is with the addition, which completely opened it up. And then now we're transitioning into just painting these cabinets and adding some shelving, and it already just looks so much better in my opinion. It is very interesting to me seeing a color scheme play out through the entire house. I mean, walking from the kitchen all the way to Holly's master bedroom, which I will link for you guys, it's pretty incredible how she has really just toned her house to those greens, those woods, with that hint of black and copper throughout. So that's what I'm trying to keep consistent. I wasn't able to capture this on camera, but Holly did go through her entire kitchen when it was out in the open and basically got rid of like three quarters of her stuff. So if you go through your stuff, free up your counter space, choose to use decorative storage. Those are some little things you can do in order to make your kitchen feel larger than life. But keep in mind, you're not on camera. This isn't live if you decide to make over your kitchen. It's just live because this YouTubers decide to share it. So design and tailor the space exactly to you. I am way too lazy. To change those knobs, by the way, fun fact, I know they're different. Your girl's tired. So many comments are gonna be like, oh my God, there's two different sets. Well, you know what? You come do all these makeovers in five months, six months. Don't forget that if you want the full budget breakdown, you want tips and tricks, things I'm not sharing on this video in detail, head over to babe.space. I have gone crazy over there with these blog posts and even some little personal posts to give you some insight on me and get to know me a little bit more. I will see you soon for another DIY.